What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 95L that is starting to impact parts of the Lesser Antilles. It's going to potentially cause a huge flood threat. We'll get to that in just a second. We have post-tropical cyclone Dawn over here that is weakening by the second. That's nothing really too much to really worry about until it gets to the United Kingdom as either a remnant low or remains a PT, uh, PTC right there. However, something just happened that kind of caught us at Storms United off guard, and there is now a new area of interest that the NHC has tagged near the Bahamas. Here's the latest from the NHC. Here's uh, 95L. Tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Windward Islands. It, uh, the system has not become more organized since yesterday. Slow development is possible over the next couple of days. Regardless of development locally, heavy rains and strong gusty winds are possible across the Lesser Antilles in the next day or two. Environmental conditions are expected to be unfavorable for development by the middle of the week. That's right. As it's moving through this part of the Caribbean, the shear is going to be increasing pretty considerably up to around 40 knots or so in some areas, and that's going to tear that apart. But this area of interest, though, that's interesting right there. Um, a weak trough of low pressure is located a few hundred miles south of Bermuda. Environmental conditions are expected to become marginally conducive for some gradual development of the system as it moves towards the southeastern U.S. coast later this week in, into the weekend. Formation chance is 20% in the next four, uh, seven days, zero in the next 48 hours. So definitely something to pay attention to right here as this has a potential threat to land right here according to what the nhc is putting out potential threat to florida georgia and south carolina maybe even north carolina if it moves a little further to the north this is an area of interest that i'm keeping a very close eye on as once again this could potentially even if it doesn't develop cause a huge flooding threat cause a bit of a wind threat definitely something to monitor going forward right here we're going to go ahead and briefly talk about 95L before we get into this new area of interest. Here, 95 knot winds, 1,012 millibars of pressure, and the maximum radius winds uh, have gone up to 60 nautical miles. They were at 40 earlier. But now if we take a look at the satellite right here, the storm activity has increased considerably, but it's not very consistent and it's not very like concentrated or anything like that. Although it is doing well to fight off the dry air, it's just not organizing very well, and that's pr pretty much the main reason why it's at a 20% chance of development right here. So still something to monitor for the flood threat, but that's about it. But the main show I'm looking at right here are pretty much two things. The main show for now, other than 95L, is this area of interest right here that NHC tagged, and this tropical wave over here that's kind of meandering in the eastern Atlantic. The reason I'm paying attention to both of these is because they're going to be moving through decent conditions for development, and according to some models, this one is going to have some potential development, and we'll have to monitor that very closely. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some global sea temperatures right here. Here's the sea temperatures we got going on. Where this low pressure system's at, it's in very warm waters, abnormally warm waters, 30 plus degrees Celsius where it's at right here, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the United States or use the standard system right here so that's already alarming enough if we take a look at the ocean heat content where this thing is at it's an area of around 75 to 100 ohc so definitely something kind of alarming to look at especially in that part of the bahamas and especially in this time of the year considering it's july and we're already seeing above average temperatures and a way above average ohc now if we go ahead and take a look at the wind shear right here the wind shear where this low pressure system is it isn't terrible but it's not great either and where this thing is right now it's around 15 knots of wind shear and that's gonna about stay about the same about 15 to 20 knots of wind shear going into this until it approaches land in georgia the carolinas where it really ramps up to around 30 to 40 knots at least for right now that is going to continue to fluctuate as time continues to go on but where this thing is right now not bad conditions at all for this to develop right here i'm going to go ahead and Next, show you what we're looking at potentially for shear and moisture for both of these areas right here, as well as this eastern Atlantic region that I'm taking a look at. And the shear does start to calm down a bit near the Bahamas, but it kind of remains, to put it in the lack of better terms, pretty stubborn across the coast right here. Gets to up to like 30 to 40 knots, and then up to 50 as it approaches North Carolina. So 
Definitely something to, uh, to pay attention to. But then by about four days out, it does weaken considerably, and the shear drops down to about 30 knots or so by the coast, down from 50 before. And then as the system's starting to approach there, we're not sure what's going to happen with that. But that's what we're looking at, at least with the Bahama system right here. In the eastern Atlantic, the shear is going to remain to be fluctuating as time continues to go on in the main development region. But it is on a downward trend, and I can report that as this shear in the Caribbean starting to weaken quite a bit. It's getting the shear's getting a lot more ridgy and troughy, which is pretty much an indicator that hurricane season's about to really start ramping up, at least in, in the next two weeks or so. So we'll have to continue to monitor that as time continues to progress. Now we're gonna go ahead and show you the moisture component to all this to see how that ties in. And the moisture, at least in the Carolinas. And the Bahamas, where this is, whole system in the West is, isn't that bad. The, there's not too much dry air to really fight this thing. It's mostly in the Appalachian Mountains over here. But as time continues to go on, there is some Sahara dust that does start to move towards that area, which could potentially cause some problems if this, this system wants to develop in the near the Bahamas over here. But overall, not terrible conditions for development in the immediate forecast. Now, if we go ahead and look at the main development region, it is going to get a little bit more moist as the system tries to develop. Right here, that's Sahara dust. There is going to be one last burst of it before things start to calm down a bit. And it's going to continue fluctuating as the latter month, half of July, and the early half of August continue to have this thing developing. But it does go to show that we are right on schedule with the shear and the moisture just, uh, despite the El Nino that's going on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs. Here's the 0Z for the European. So... This is what we have for the European Ensemble. For 95L, the European, even though there's a bit of uh, not very friendly shear, it's not giving up on it. And I want to go ahead and uh, ch check this with the shear forecast to see what's going on with this at 114 hours out. The shear across the parts of the Caribbean does weaken considerably about five days out or so. So if 95L can take advantage of that, something could happen as it approaches the C Central America. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. I'm mainly focused on this system that could potentially impact the U.S. That's potentially going to be developing in the Baham near the Bahamas as well as the system in the eastern Atlantic over here. So we'll have to continue to monitor this. This system general, potentially could get up to hurricane, maybe strong tropical storm strength as time continues to go on. However, this system, according to what I've been seeing, is mainly going to be staying out to shore, uh, off to sea, so not going to be that big of a land threat unless it, some, it jerks a bit south to the Lesser Antilles near the Leeward Islands. So that's what the European is showing. We'll show you the GFS ensembles. We'll go ahead and go to the Zero Z for comparison. And the 0C is showing something interesting, similar to that with this system right here, although they are really ramping up in intensity right here. The GFS has several runs of hurricane strength systems, potentially hitting the Leeward Islands right here, and then Puerto Rico, but then it starts moving a bit more to the north. One of these runs have it hitting Bermuda, and then the rest of these have it staying out mainly to sea, although there are a couple of runs that have this impacting the United States near Florida, near Georgia, the Carolinas, those areas right there. So something to monitor right there. I'm not exactly trusting the GFS for now, considering how they tend to overestimate everything. Now I'll show you the GPS run right here, and the GPS is showing something similar. It does show a couple of scenarios of this tropical system developing and strengthening into a hurricane. However, again, mainly stays out to sea. But the GPS has something developing after this, about seven days out, and then potentially hitting the Lesser Antilles, moving through the Caribbean, striking Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and then potentially being a land threat to the Bahamas, Cuba, and even Florida as time continues to go on. So this is definitely something we need to monitor. Uh, get your hurricane preparedness plan ready in case one of these things do start to develop right here and we'll give you all the information here on the pat's path predictor channel we're closing the video right here ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed it leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new if you want to come and hang out with us at storms united feel free to join the discord server servers uh, link is right there but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe